Good morning and welcome to Frank's School, the seventh year, 63rd uh, day, first video. This is still part of that update, uh, June, the June 1st update of uh, the building of the set, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the village f for my hopeful movie, uh, Hope for Movie Resurrection. Uh, and and I, this is kind of just something I want to throw in. Well, it's important. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it minimizing sawing and nailing in a faux cut first floor. Uh, I can't draw, but it doesn't stop me from trying. Uh, now, I, as I explained in that last video, I'm working with dry hardwood. It's rough sawn, uh, but it's dry, and uh, you know, quite a bit of it has has cupped and it's warped and it's twisted. You know, that that has to be there has to be some. Well, that's if it's cupped up because of the sun beating on it. Well, this time when I use it, I'll put it the other way around. So, so the or I mean, so the cup instead of being like this will be like that. So if it were exposed to the weather more, it would tend to flatten out. But I, I probably won't expose it to the weather long. I'll probably this time uh, uh, cover cover them up. But anyway, that's not so much my point. Uh, I said I'm a wash with wood because I'm I'm unbuilding all these huts and and the wood that I'm getting the one by sixes they were the sills uh, and uh, the corner boards in some cases that that I'd actually started up that high the the plates another thing I call the piece over here the sill that that confuses a few carpenters because they want to think of it as the shoe or the bottom plate well this this kind of construction is different. <laughs> You know, it, there aren't always names for the parts uh, that I'm that I'm making. I'm kind of having to invent the vocabulary. I call it a sill because it's the lowest member that is critical to the building. It well, what's underneath the sills uh, can you know, it can sort of vary, but but in this case, the sills are on top of the the subfloor. Uh, it's just different. Uh, and I'll come back to the sills in a moment. But anyway, what this is supposed to represent is the, the building is basically 8 by 12. It's actually 8 foot by 12 foot 5 because of the uh, spacing needed for the bents, is what I call them, that go up to support the roof. Uh, uh, but my, my point here, though, has to do with, uh, with how I'm using this wood. And, and uh, it, it, it would be very hard and very tedious to try to nail it. Uh, so that that's not exactly out of the question, but but nearly because it's dry, the dry oak. You, if you have experience, you know what I'm talking about. Sawing is not so bad, uh, but anyway, I, I have so much of it. <clears throat> As I am rebuilding uh, the the uh, the huts with with the added five inches, well, these pieces here I've tried to represent beams is what I call them. They're one. They're they're four by fours. <clears throat> dunnage that I can get for just almost nothing an eight foot piece of four by four for about 35 cents uh, at, a, at a pallet factory it, it's dunnage it's it's shipping they don't have a it's used for separating loads when they ship things and they don't really have a use for it nobody knows how to use real wood anymore that's not poison the same piece of wood uh, if you went, went and bought it commercially it would probably be soaked full of poison they call it treated, and it would cost maybe twelve dollars, and I'm getting them for thirty-five cents. But anyway, I had in the book that I wrote, I was saying what's underneath the sills can vary. You can have no floor at all; it can be on the dirt, uh, a dirt floor. Uh, but anyway, uh, what I'm uh, typically what I'm doing is I'm running these uh, dunnage. There's the beams. The the sweet points that I talk about are, are here, here are the uh, or sweet spots. Those are the uh, critical ones that carry the load uh, down of this uh, deep soil, very heavy roof. These, not so much so. They don't really carry the load, but those, those are the places that I support the beams with uh, blocks, and it takes some work to get it leveled up and stuff. But I'm letting the whole thing float, so I'm, you know, I'm not, there's no mortar or anything like that, or not even any digging. I do it on the surface and bring things up. Well, anyway, on these sweet spots, I put the beans, and then I put the joists. Actually, wait, I, there's more joists. There's, yeah, I, I, I'm, I, I, since I have the material anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm putting joists in here as well. Uh, you, you wouldn't necessarily have to, 
but it's better because a lot of these pallets are weak and they, they're damaged and they, and they need that support. All right, so there's the joists. Now the pallets fit right in here. They have the stringers going like that and then the slats go like that. Uh, now, as I rest a, 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 a four foot pallet on that and here and here, I need to leave an inch space between them <clears throat> uh, to, uh, to allow for, again, the, the, the bench. And that, a problem which I learned to call purchase, I don't know how you spell it, but there's a little bit of a problem with purchase then because I've only got four inches to land on. I've got an inch gap which leaves an inch and a half purchase for the pallets to rest on that. Uh, purchase is like the amount of wood, that, it's a little bit hard to explain, but it, 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 if there's not enough purchase it would fall off. It, you, you need a little bit on there. Uh, so there is that problem and I, what I think I'll probably do in the future now is on the <clears throat> on the 4 by 4s I'll lay 1 by 6s which I, I have so many. I'll just lay them on there. That will make the top surface 6 inches wide. Then I'll have plenty of purchase and I won't have to worry about that. So anyway I lay them down. And you notice there's no nails, no sawing, <laughs> none of this. Uh, and I don't put, put pallets in here. Uh, I, I, this is 40 inches, 40 inches, and I'm left with a 16 inch gap right there. At first I thought, oh, I got to saw pallets. I hate to saw pallets. It's, you, you want to saw as few pallets as possible, or, or take, you don't take them apart. It's just too much work. I, I build with whole pallets and saw very few. Uh, you're left with a 16 inch gap, but eventually I realized I don't have to fill that gap. I'll just leave it. Uh, because later, if I in in the floor, if I want to open a drain or 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 do something through the floor, that would be the logical place. And there's no real good reason to have a pallet in there. Sixteen inches is not too great a span, not not for not for oak uh, or not for inch thick hardwood uh, so forth. All right, now as I'm getting all this stuff, as I lay the uh, the floor. On the uh, on a 45, which is the right way to do it. You know, if you went on to do a, a finished floor, then you you might lay your finished floor on a 45 the other way, or you could go back to this way. But but this is the right way to do it. What I had realized was I don't actually have to cut saw that all. I mean, most carpenters would they would well you'd you'd lay your wood on there and then you'd snap lines and saw saw it nice and nice and square which is what I will do for the up ladder floor, is what I call it, the, the, the second floor. I, I will do that because there's no sill going on top of it. But the reason I can get away with doing it like this and, and not doing that sawing is because the sill is six inches wide and it covers that gap. And I actually have begun to suspect that it's better to do it that way because as I've been taking these apart, in between where, where wood meets wood, when it's been exposed to the weather, that's where it has tended to, to rot or, or get weak. If any place that I use pine, for example, uh, it rotted considerably there. But anyway, the sill will cover that gap. Now, my, uh, when it goes on top, and it won't make it weaker. And that airspace, it's probably good. If it bothered somebody enough, they could plaster it full, I suppose, if they wanted. Or, or cover it with nosing uh, or a header. It took uh, my, my young friend David a while to, to accept that because he, he, he's doing really nice work and he, he just wasn't comfortable with that but I'm very comfortable with it now. And, and now as I lay these on there, I, I, the longest ones I laid and they would go from the corner and they'd span, they'd span that uh, and then I'd do another one here and it would span it and then I'd be left I'd be left then with this piece that would have to be cut to length. But it wouldn't have to be cut on a 45, which is a little bit harder to do. And it's, yeah, you can, obviously you can do it, but it's just a little bit harder to do. Um, and so, and, and when I lay this eight foot piece down, well, then I'll have to measure that and cut it. Although if I were always using eight foot, they would be the same and I could just cut a whole bunch and go right along and fill them in. But then at a certain point I realized as I was running out of, uh, of, eight, of the long stuff, 
I can lay that floor from the center outward. In other words, instead of starting on the end, I can cover that span, make sure I can stagger the joints, lay all my wood across there that'll actually manage to get across that 16 inch. Then, then I'll go with a card and a, a pencil and, and I'll number them. And, and I'll just get a measurement right along there for what I have to fill in. You know, so I can go out and do all my cutting, they'll be numbered and I'll just lay them in there. So there will be some sewing to fill that out. Uh, well, I don't know if you followed this or not, but I did want to say that because it's saving me an awful lot of time and effort. And if I decide to take the, the faux cut apart, you just lift the floor off, probably number it and move it somewhere else. There's, there's no nailing. Now, if I were worried about the building racking, that's one of the advantages of, of going on a 45, one of several, then you would have to nail some to, to achieve your uh, triangle. Uh, you know, to, but the, the, the bottom floor is not going to rack. Now, the up ladder floor, I, I will nail uh, to some extent because there you've got the wind working on it. You've got people up there moving around. There, there's a certain tendency to, to rack. All right, bye for now.